Well, good evening. This is uh, Hound Dog Steve on the 23rd of March 2017. And uh, in Canada here, we have just had the federal budget. And, um, well, Bill Morneau is our finance minister. And he got a new pair of shoes for the reading of the budget. And I can tell you, Bill, you know, you're so far off base, it's unbelievable. Well, of course, this, this is a kind of wait-and-see budget anyways. It's a, it's a kind of do-nothing budget. But um, I really have to say that you are not getting it up in Ottawa. And uh, you are leading us down a very, very, very tenuous route. Now, I notice here, one of the things... I don't know if you can see this little graph here. Okay, the top line, the red line, is the service sector employment increases, 11% increase. And the bottom line uh, is the actual produced goods employment levels. And they have been steadily, well, they've risen a little, but they've, they're now dropping off their minus 3, 3.9, uh, is that? 3.92%. So they call that 4%. Uh, I think that in itself is an indication of uh, where the economy is going. Uh, you know, service sector work is all very well, but who are they servicing? You know, you, you've got to have people with real jobs to service, and those real jobs are evaporating uh, pretty rapidly at this point in time. And of course, because of the baby, baby boomer demographic, people are retiring in record numbers at this time. But uh, I, I see, you know, they're talking about the Canada Infrastructure Bank. Bill. Bill, can we talk, Bill? You have an infrastructure bank already in existence, already set up, already designed to do what you want to do. It's called, guess what, the Bank of Canada. And maybe you haven't read the history of the Bank of Canada, but uh, maybe you should because it was brought into being in 1936. It had one mandate, and one mandate only, and that was to print money at 0% interest for the government to be spent into circulation with infrastructure projects. And that is why Canada was such an incredible country from, from 1936 to 1976 when um, uh, your father, Justin, Pierre Trudeau, was convinced by the international banksters to be allowed to take over the issuance of money at interest. And if you look at any stats can graph, okay, you will see that's when inflation took off, it was in 1976, and it's continued its dazzling upward uh, movement ever since. Okay, and we now can no longer keep up with inflation. Personally, my recommendation to you, if you see this video, my personal recommendation to you is to go into the board of directors of the Bank of Canada and say, gentlemen, it's been a slice, but please clean out your desks because we're taking over the Bank of Canada again. And you can do that you still hold the mandate, okay? The government holds all of the shares of the Bank of Canada and it is still a public federal reserve. It's the only publicly owned federal reserve bank in the whole system, okay? So you can do this and you can get the Bank of Canada to do what it should be doing, which is printing money at 0% and spent into infrastructure projects. And God knows, if you're driving around anywhere in Ontario, you know how much we need infrastructure money. We can rebuild this country. That's what we did in 1936. We were in a similar situation. 1936, we started rebuilding Canada. That's where we got the St. Lawrence Seaway, the Trans-Canada Highway, uh, all of the armed forces were, were uh, we were the second largest armed forces in the world. We put our people back to work building the things that we need in this country. And for you to not know that, why is it that a grade 10 person is telling you 
the history of Canada, the Bank of Canada, when you are the finance minister for the Liberal government. Tell me that. So, as it is right now, every, everything that you do is just icing on the cake because it is a flawed formula. The money system is a flawed formula. Uh, and I'll tell you why. And it, it's provable because in 1976, Pierre Trudeau borrowed uh, $37 billion from the Bank of Canada. This is when the banks had stepped in, they were charging interest on that money. Okay. Prior to that, well, Canada had never really been in debt very much more than $18 billion to itself. And uh, so anyways, from that time in 1976 until the present time, uh, we haven't missed a payment. We're now paying approximately $40 billion a year in interest on a $37 billion loan. And we now owe uh, what is eight, $860 billion in interest on a $37 billion loan. Uh, I think you would agree with me that that is evidence enough that you will never pay that loan off. It's impossible. And if you create a loan that is impossible to pay off, uh, that loan does not have to be paid. That's a criminal loan. So you have every right, Justin Trudeau, you and your finance minister, to walk into the board of directors and tell them to take a trip home. Because until you do that, we will never, ever, ever resolve the problems that we have right now in Canada financially. And you may want to be a good player, you may want to be part of the G20, you may want to look like, oh yeah, Canada's going along to get along, but you know, all of these countries, their inability, their transigence in looking at the formulas that were taking place here, they just keep pretending that this can keep on going. Canada has to become independent again. We have to take control of our own money system and disengage from the world money system until they sort this out. Okay, here is the Bank for International Settlements website, a board of directors. And it says here, uh, the board is responsible for determining the strategic and policy directions for the BIS supervising BAS management and fulfilling the specific tasks given to it by the bank's statutes. It meets at least six times a year. And we go down here and we can see the uh, board of directors. Uh, Mark Carney, we know him from Canada. Uh, Stephen Pollars uh, is our current um, our minister. And uh, so here we have represented London, Mexico City, Frankfurt, New York, Brasilia, Stockholm, Zurich, Amsterdam, Tokyo, Paris, Rome, Mumbai, Ottawa, Brussels, Paris, Rome, Brussels, Washington, Beijing. Okay, so this basically covers most of the world. Uh, about the BIS overview, established uh, on May 17th, 1930, as the world's oldest international financial organization. It has 60 member central banks representing countries from around the world that together make up about 95% of the world's GDP. And um, of course the head office is in Basel in Switzerland. So basically, um, Bill Monod gets his instructions from the BAS. The BAS control everything. Uh, they have certain committee, committees that uh, research into stuff. One of them would be the Financial Stability Board. Isn't that a nice picture of Switzerland? Oh my God, wouldn't you just love to live there? So what kind of things do they look into? Um, looking at a Sub-Saharan and Africa discusses corporate governance. Macro prudential frameworks and shadow banking. Hmm, I wonder what that could be about. You will have to go to the site. Uh, I will leave it uh, down below and you can go do your own research. 
uh, FSB publishes report on the rehypothecation of client assets and collateral reuse. Okay, hypothecation is basically using one loan as a down payment on an even larger loan. Uh, I wonder why they would be looking into that kind of thing. Policy areas, shadow banking. Oh, there's that shadow banking again. So these people are the people who control the world's money. We do not control the world's money. And unless you, Bill Morneau and Stephen Pollos disconnect from this boat anchor that is about to be strangled by its own foolish monetary lending practices, we are going to get dragged down with the ship. So I just want you to bear that in mind. All links will be below. Okay, so Bill, here's another little street level indication of how well your economy is doing. Payday loans. Uh, you go to any Canadian city and you will see an absolutely dramatic increase in the number of payday loan operations opening up. Uh, in Toronto, they're on virtually every street corner. Okay, and the reason you go to a payday loan place is because there's too much month at the end of the money. And if there's too much month at the end of the money, you know your pay is not making it. So you go to a payday loan place and then you're done like a dog's dinner. But these are an indication that your economy is not doing so well. Take heed, Bill Morno. I don't know how it is going to work. Uh, America is playing fast and loose with its reserve currency status. It is impossible. You know, you blame Trump. Don't blame Trump. Trump's got nothing to do with this. This is the uh, Treasury Board and the Federal Reserve fiscal policy. And everyone else is dancing to the American tune because we are tied to their dollar. Now what happened in 1936 when Canada had its own bank and was creating its own money, okay, the way we worked out our uh, far, foreign um, financial policy was, well, we had the resources. Uh, if you want coal, if you want steel, uh, if you want silicone, if you want um, whatever it is, well, you figure out what you're going to pay us and we'll decide whether we're going to accept it. And we can take that in in hard currency that you can spend outside of Canada and build up a, uh, a foreign capital reserve uh, and just keep this as a, a purely internal currency. This can work. It has worked. And it will work again. And trust me, if you do this, you will be a savior of this country. You'll go down to history as the savior of Canada in the most troubled financial times that I can think of. I don't think people quite understand. There is 1.8 quadrillion that's quadrillion with a Q, that's a thousand trillion dollars, okay, is a quadrillion, 1.8 quadrillion dollars in the derivative market alone. And they're talking about rehypothecation of client funds. Are you kidding me? Uh, 1.8 quadrillion, incidentally, is about a hundred times the entire planet's GDP for the next hundred years, just to draw even. Okay, so this debt has to go somewhere. It has to be reconciled somewhere. How they do that, I think there's only three possible ways that they can do that, is you revalue your system on gold, silver, or Bitcoin. A Bitcoin, believe it or not, uh, could be a savior. If you revalued all the debt in Bitcoin and used the Bitcoin as your reserve currency and every country around the world traded in and out of Bitcoin, 
and your own currency uh, derived its uh, value from the value of Bitcoin and the value of your productivity and what you had to offer. I think it would work out incredibly well because you cannot manipulate Bitcoin. Right now you're seeing currency manipulation by the American Federal Reserve Bank and that is what is screwing everything up. When you have the value of your currency going up and down you can't plan for the future, you can't make any decisions at all. So we need to escape that and this is the way to do it is to put the Bank of Canada back in its original status. I mean, you, you've actually broken the bank constitution by allowing what's happening to happen. And I mean, I don't know whether you realize this, but, you know, there are banks, there are banks that are borrowing money from the Bank of Canada at three quarters of a percent and lending it back to the government at three percent. Are you kidding me? when we could print that money for ourselves? And that was the key question that Gerald Grattan McGeer asked at the commission for the inception of the Bank of Canada. He asked the head, actually he became the first chief of the Bank of Canada, um, Towers, um, oh, I'll get that for you in a link. Anyways, uh, he asked him, why would we pay for something that we can do easily for ourselves? And he couldn't answer. He could not answer the question. Because he knew that the, it's impossible for the bank not to add interest to its money. And that puts governments in an impossible situation. So Bill Mono, I, I, I don't care what you do in your budget, you're just playing, uh, you know, uh, musical chairs on the uh, rear deck of the Titanic, okay? The system is going to keel over, I don't know when, but it will. It mathematically has to, and you know it, and you think you have the tools, but you've already burnt all of your tools, and that is money printing. And money printing is coming to an end. Well, it's not coming to an end, but the effectiveness of the money printing, because... We have long passed the Minsky moment. In fact, we've had several Minsky moments. And what is a Minsky moment, you might ask? So uh, this is a Minsky moment. Okay, so if you have a graph like this, okay, so this line here, this is what happens to your economy when you suddenly get a big loan or you print money or you have a huge injection of cash you get this kind of rocket-like trajectory of growth in your economy and down here this is the interest line okay the interest line uh, starts off very low and it creeps along um, but, but because the interest is exponential it always does a hockey stick and ends up and this little moment here right here this is your Minsky moment okay this is where your economy starts to go down because the debt servicing has now become such a drag on growth that there is no growth now what we did is we've had several Minsky moments without a real crash the 2007 was probably the closest we got but in 1972, when we came off the gold standard, that was a Minsky moment. And they knew it was going to collapse. So they came off the gold standard, and that allowed the banks to basically go wild. There was no real uh, accounting for the money that they were creating. And uh, so this is why you get the hypothecation and rehypothecation taking. And then when you get up into the dot com crash, uh, the lowering of interest rates the creating of more money, uh, you know, this helicopter Ben Bernanke where he was uh, uh, dumping all of this money into the banking system. This was another Minsky moment, you know, after 2000, after 2007, and now here we are in 2016, 
And of course, you see, every time you dump more cash in and create another Minsky moment, uh, it, the effect becomes uh, less and less and less over time. Okay, so we're reaching that point now where I, I don't think it really matters what the Federal Reserve prints down in America. They are just going to inflate their currency, but it isn't going to have the desired effect of creating the illusion of growth. Okay, and that's the big problem here, is we're creating the illusion of growth. So, Bill Morneau, your budget is nonsense. You are not paying attention to the really important stuff that's going on here. And um, as far as I'm concerned, when you're in with the Bank of International Settlements, you are in league with the devil. Okay? Anyway, this is Hound Dog Steve signing off. Hope you have a great evening, and we'll talk soon. Oh, and don't forget to uh, like, subscribe, comment, dislike. Uh, we love to hear your comments. It is amazing reading through some of the ideas and things that you people out there in video land come up with. Okay, so talk soon.